Hello, hello everyone, it's old Twit Talks Cars here, hope you're well, hope you're keeping safe. So, episode three already of Old Twit's pre-classic predictions, can you believe it? And today we're talking about the Volkswagen Polo Mark II, and particularly for me, the bread van version, which we'll talk all about. Now, nobody ever told you, did they? I hope not. Well, these were going to be exciting cars or cars that you'd have put up on your bedroom wall when you were a kid. This really is about finding the cars today that you can buy for very little money that in a relatively short period of time are going to be worth quite a lot more. And frankly, again, you know, don't take your life savings and invest them on the back of this, but um, probably out of all the cars we cover, I think this is the one where you could potentially spend a grand a day and in probably 18 months, two years, have three grand. Um, so if you've got garage space, you've got a grand knocking about, you can find one that's good, then why not get involved with these little cars? Let me just remind you very briefly of the criteria that I look at, and it will be brief because we've been through it before, so if you're a regular, you know all about it. But here's my criteria on uh, how we judge a classic car's potential. So without further ado, let's get into it, let's have a look at how many's left, what's on eBay that's been sold, and then we're going to score the car at the end. So uh, buckle up, here we go. So perhaps surprisingly, the Mark II version of Volkswagen's popular Polo was actually a bit of an innovator. I don't think ever described as exciting or prestigious at any point, but it did introduce something a little more interesting to the super mini sector of the early 1980s. I had a girlfriend with one around that time actually. Like her, they were just a bit, I don't know, different and I suppose quirky. Although available in three body stars, you've got your coupe, which um, some know as a comeback really a hatchback version. You've got the strange looking Derby, which is sort of a sedan saloon type version. And you've got our friend, the Wagon, uh, which is the one I want to concentrate on here today. Now, interestingly, the Wagon was called the Wagon in virtually every other market other than the UK, where it was just called the Polo. Um, and shortly after its introduction, it started to colloquially be known as bread van, which is what a lot of people know them as at the moment. To my mind, the bread van looks great and sort of strangely modern even now. I'm a big fan of three-door estate body styles and Volkswagen have been no stranger to those prior to the Polo. Although the Mark II Polo was priced to compete with other uh, contemporaries at the time, like the Metro and the Fiesta, you did pay a price in terms of the standard spec. Available at the time at launch in C, CL and GL trim levels. All of them were about as well appointed as a Puritan's bed chamber. Possibly the start of the German trend of this period of keeping standard specs on the, uh, shall we call them, minimalist side. So basically you've got no radio, you've got wind down windows, all your warning lights were just little LED blobs. Um, you've got rubber floor coverings in all but the top GL models, so yeah, that was pretty, pretty cool. Technical spec was a bit stingy too, for example there was no brake servo, which often made stopping in the same postcode as the one in which you applied the brakes, also an option. They haven't been without issue of course, like most cars, so rust protection wasn't all you'd expect from a leading German manufacturer. So the sills, wheel arches, door bottoms and exhausts are all pretty vulnerable to the UK at sulky roads. Engines are generally sound, but the automatic chokes can be troublesome and owners have often swapped out carburetors for retrofit options. VW has such a great strong following and show scene that it's hard to think of a model that's 30 years old or more that isn't appreciating really strongly at the moment. The Mark II Polo is certainly no exception, so why don't you get involved? 
So jumping to our old friend howmanyleft.co.uk, this is one of the challenge areas that we get into with this particular website because if you put something in as ubiquitous and across as many marks and models as the polo, it becomes very, very difficult to decipher which one's the one you're looking for because they don't helpfully go mark one, mark two, uh, bread pan, coupe, blah de blah. This information comes from what's on the um, registration document in the UK, which is often completely spurious, to be honest. So this is a case where you have to do a little bit of detective work. So I know through a bit of research that the Mark II Polo, in the UK at least, only came in C, CL and GL trims. And uh, I know that they only had a one litre, a 1.1 or a 1.3 litre engine. So based on that, I think I'm going to try and narrow this a bit by going for the Polo C, which is the basic one. See what that does. Yeah, that narrows it down nicely, look. Um, so this, I'm pretty sure, is the Mark II Polo. So it's the C, which is the entry level one. And as you'll see, we ignore that one because that's clearly spurious because it's got a C and a C. Um, but this one here, these these um, three, these four, I'm pretty sure are the car in question. So as you can see, the uh, basic entry level one, we're down to three, three, two of those cars. The formal E1, which I think was a more economical version, um, down to 28. The classic was more of the saloon version, which I think was called the Derby in other uh, markets. God knows what that one is. But anyway, if you look across those, you've got um, 330, 360, 370. Yeah, you've got about 370 of those cars remaining. So let's just quickly click into that. Yeah, and you can see, uh, annoyingly, again, one of the limitations with this website is that the data only goes back to 1994. So given this car was um, launched well before that, it doesn't give you that information right Back. So it's pretty hard to tell uh, when these were first registered if it falls before 1994. So I'm just putting uh, Polo um, VW Polo Mark II in the search bar, and there's a couple of cars that for sale currently, both red van versions, but they're both the um, facelifted version, which came I think in 1991. You can tell by the oblong lights so uh yeah there you see that's the later version sort of mark ii of the mark ii if you like so if i hit the sold items you can see what's been actually selling the green numbers obviously highlighting that for you so there's a few here but not so many of the bread van versions there's a few coupes um knocking about but like I say really it's the bread van that I'm looking at that one's quite interesting there is a danger with these that the old Carlos Fandango wheel brigade get hold of them but let's have a quick look at this just for fun there you go I mean to be fair I actually mind that <laughs> it's quite cool doesn't it so it looks like that's been lowered a bit and it's got some um, split rims on so yeah that can happen so you're obviously much better off getting a nice original old motor if you can in my view for this particular car so there's a couple here there's a coupe one there's a couple here um, that are of interest it's the first one that leaps out 1170 quid sold a month or so ago so it's a recent sale. Looks nice and original from here. So let's have a little click in here and see what it was all about. 1170, 21 bids. So, you know, it's quite an active auction. There we go. 
I quite like them in white. You don't see white very often. They're often blue or um, red or dark blue. And there's a sort of Air Force blue and a dark blue. But actually, I quite like white cars. And uh, I think it suits this car quite nicely. It's a sunny little disposition. So it all looks very original there. <clears throat> You'll see from the round lights here, this is the original version of the Mark II. And this is the C, which is the entry level version. So probably rubber. I don't know, we'll have a look. Someone might have put carpets in this, but probably rubber mats inside. You've got your original um, little spoiler that surrounds the rear window. All looks nice and straight. I mean, that paintwork looks exceptionally good. It may have had a respray, but it may not be a white car originally. Like I say, probably did a white but you very rarely see them so yeah there's your interior uh i can't really tell from here looks like carpet doesn't it but yeah it's all very austere in here um you know you've got your wind up windows that's pretty much it the seats here look as if they've been you get that wobbly edge on the seat bolster looks like they've been recovered or they've had the covers off at least to maybe try and clean them up or they may be replacements and what happens is done by the amateur they often look all wobbly and wiggly back ones look okay they don't look like they've been got at so it's quite nice clean up holstery um, decent looking little car let's have a look at the um, description here so it's a 1986 mark II bread van great to see people using that term um, 68,000 miles which they believe to be uh, original it's got the one litre engine and uh, you know rightly they're calling it pokey and smooth to drive which I believe these cars are it's been a while but certainly that's how I remember it um, they've had a new cam belt and water pump which is great to note because that gives you some confidence that you're not going to have a problem there and crash your engine oh okay recentish respray so yeah that's what I Saw. I mean, it looks nice. Um, whether it's the original colour or not, I don't know, but it looks like it's been well done. Uh, no radio, which is common with these. However, there is wiring according to this. So you've got your speakers and your cables so and a blanking plate, so it'd be easy just to drop one in there. Uh, there's anything wrong with it at all. And I think at the money, it was a good buy for somebody. Um, I think the auctions often do better, buyers often do better than the um, classified ads because you might just be lucky on the day that there's not a lot of people looking or interested in the car and come up with a little little gem like that. So yeah, I'd probably have gone for that myself if I'd have seen it, to be honest. Lovely little thing. Anyway, let's jump back. There was one other that I quickly wanted to have a little look-see at. This one, and you see 1650, this one got and again it was sold a little bit so a couple of months ago um, so relatively recently however this is the GL the 1.3 GL so that may be the difference so you got a bit more power um, and relatively speaking a better spec um, it's in the more common colour that you see these in so um, you'll see you've got the GL uh, wheel trims there which are pretty horrible but they are original I think so yeah nice little rural aspect there um, yeah there's your lovely massive wheel trims mousy around the sills here and around the wheel arches from this angle and you have to watch under here so basically the bottom half of the car where the salt on our lovely road spray up onto it um, exhaust all oh yeah here we go yeah so under that bit of trim I imagine if you um, prize that off it would look not good you've got some sizable dings there look at that one in the door um someone with a massive supermarket trolley well looks things so yeah not really very tidy on the body looks like it needs a load of body work doing on there interior got a radio this time um nice gray carpet so again there's not a massive difference you've got sort of colored door cards and what have you so there's not a huge amount of difference with the um GL spec you've got the little um, wing mirror manual wing mirror um, adjustment just on the driver's door so by today's standards you're going to be austerity spec there 
and there's your GL badge on the back there you've got the press down number plates which are quite common for German cars a bit of carpet probably the original nice and light VW mats um, you've got your wibbly wobbly seats again so whether these covers have come off difficult to know but you can probably sort those out with a bit of bit of work they just don't go back on very easily once off so let's have a look at the um, description so this one is 35,000 mile car so pretty low mileage will um, be part of the reason why it's gone for such decent money one previous old lady owner okay <coughs> fair enough yeah, the body doesn't really add up, does it, to the 35,000 miles? But anyway, let's park that. Um, one elderly previous lady owner, of course. Um, amazingly, she spent apparently £16,000 on this car in nine years. Well, I'm sceptical about that. Either some rip-off garage was charging a three grand a service, or that's a bit of a, um, a fib, shall we say. Um... Weber carb, so it's had a Weber carb put on it, which isn't uncommon on these. Looks like it's been fully serviced. Plugs, oil filter, air filter, rotor arm, timing belt, which is good. New battery, oil change, so recent service done. So that looks reasonable. But yeah, the, the body on this just doesn't seem to add up to the really low mileage, does it? But anyway. Um, it's sold and someone presumably is happy with it. Two keys, always nice. But yeah, not as nice looking as the other one. I'd probably have gone for the other one even in the C, one litre C spec. So, scoring time. Um, like I say, I think these are a great little investment right now. They're quite hard to find. There's not many about as we've seen, but it's worth a look. Watch out for the rust. Time to score. So on criteria one, which is cost. New cars available within our price range. I think, you know, by the end of the year, I think you're going to struggle to find one, if I'm honest, for under two grand, uh, a decent one at least. So I give this car on cost an eight. In terms of mileage, now, this is about can we find cars that are under 100,000 mile um, criteria. Now, the nature of the car means that often these haven't done so many miles. So you've seen the ones that we've looked at are all relatively low miles uh, comparatively. So yeah, definitely, um, they're out there. There's not many out there, but they're probably gonna be under 100,000 miles. So for that, this car gets an eight. Rarity too, you've seen a little bit hard to drill down into the figures on how many are left, but you've seen that they're gonna be pretty rare. You know, we're talking low hundreds of these cars that are on the road at the moment. I give this car an eight for rarity value. Plus factor, now, mm, yeah, that's a bit harder, isn't it? I mean, are they gonna be thrilling to drive? No, I think they're, they're, I think they're fun to drive from memory. They're a sprightly little thing. Um, are they well specified? No. Um, I think what goes in this car's favor in terms of plus factor is, I do like them, they're quirky. Uh, they look good still, I think. Um, if the paint's good, they look great. They look strangely modern still. And I think running costs are going to be in your favour. You know, they're going to be cheap to insure, particularly on a classic car policy, which you will get these cars on. Um, cheap to tax, good on fuel. So I think that's going to be its plus factors. However, are they that compelling? Not really, are they? So I'm going to give it a four. Now usability is great on these, great little city car. Uh, as long as it's running well, you know, you're gonna get good mileage. You, you can get people in it. You can get stuff in it. It's like a little estate, seats go down. Brilliant, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you live in the town particularly, you're not doing long miles. Great, great usability. So again, for usability, this car gets an eight. 
So all in all, that gives our little car a total of 36 out of 50, which I think is a great little showing for this. And really, other than plus factors, it's scoring very highly all the way along. So I would encourage you to get involved. Let me have your comments. There are people out there that know a lot more about these cars than I do, so let me know what you think, um, good or bad. Please give me a thumbs up and a like if you have liked it. Please subscribe if you think that these are going to be of interest to you going forward because there will be at least one every week. Uh, take care and I look forward to seeing you soon.